Uh, we have um, a proposed um, a public hearing on um, a local law creating a new chapter in the code of the town of Greenberg entitled Bimbo. I'd like to move that we open up the hearing. Second. On favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Council Machine, if you could kindly promote Aaron Schmidt. Oh, sure. We have several individuals who would like to speak. Is there an introduction, or should we just move right to uh, calling on the speakers? I thought, well, well, Aaron I think, is going to speak. Isn't Aaron, Aaron supposed to speak? Yeah, Aaron's going to speak. That's yeah. why we're promoting Aaron. Oh, okay. Good evening, Supervisor Finer and members of the town board. For the record, Aaron Schmidt, Deputy Commissioner, Department of, the, of Community Development and Conservation. And just uh, excuse me for one second because my speak show is lost in the share screen. <laughs> <laughs> Press Thank you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> At the request of Supervisor Finer, following a number of resident concerns and complaints, I've prepared a draft local law involving the regulation of bamboo, specifically running bamboo. Running bamboo can be destructive to the natural environment, potentially harmful to human health, destructive to structures, walls, driveways, walkways, and other improvements. Roots can push through brickwork, drains, patios, and exploit cracks or weaknesses in concrete. In the process of developing the draft local law, our office researched other ordinances in effect, primarily on Long Island, where running bamboo has been an issue for over a decade now, including the towns of Smithtown, Oyster Bay, Brookhaven, and Hempstead, as well as the villages of Woodsburg and the Branch, among others. The draft local law prohibits this type of vegetation from being planted into the ground and, with respect to existing running bamboo, makes it unlawful, unlawful to permit, cultivate, and or allow it to be maintained in a manner that it migrates onto a, any adjoining property, including any public property and or any town right of way. With respect to control, which can be difficult, the local law requires that bamboo owners take measures to prevent running bamboo from invading or growing onto adjoining or neighboring properties, including the town's right-of-way. While metal sheathing is listed as an option, it ultimately is up to the bamboo property owner to ensure that off-site invasion does not occur. Should running bamboo be found to have migrated onto an adjacent property, it will be deemed a public nuisance and the building inspector's office will be provided the authority to issue a notice of violation, which will require the property owner to remove such running bamboo within a 30-day period. Failure to cure a violation within the allotted time period will result in fines between $100 and $500 per offense. Repeat offenders may be subject to fines up to $1,000. The draft local law was referred to the Conservation Advisory Council, which reviewed it during its two meetings this month. Following helpful recommendations issued by the CAC that have been incorporated into the most recent draft, on June 26th, the CAC issued a positive recommendation to the town board on the proposed local law. Town staff have also received a number of emails and phone calls from residents who have expressed support for this legislation. So thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Do we have anyone speaking? Yes. Hal Samus? No. Okay, public comment. Okay, for the bamboo then. Uh, Elaine Taylor Gordon. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. I am going to speak for this law. I think it is absolutely essential. Um, my credentials are that in, where I lived in Scarsdale before for 20 years, I waged an eight-year fight against bamboo from my neighbor that would, had invaded my front property and actually broke through the main line. Um, 
that caused a flood at my house. It took me eight years of my own expense, thousands and thousands of dollars, to get rid of that bamboo. When I moved here seven years ago, I moved into a property on Cross Hill Road in Hartsdale Estates, where my next door neighbor with 2.6 acres of land had two stands of bamboo in her front yard. She contained it, uh, it was tied up. Um, it was the right thing to do because the only way that you can really contain a stand of bamboo, according to Clemson University, is to build a concrete barrier around it 18 feet into the ground. And even that is not sure. You can also try uh, different kinds of hardwood fences. It is a scourge. It will destroy any native tree. And I think that Greenberg, the city of trees, really should not be um, encouraging anyone to plant something that is going to attack our own trees. Bamboo is not native to this part of the world. It is a jungle product. And it belongs in the jungle. And people who live in jungles know that they have to go through it with machetes. That is not something we can do. So let me fast forward to the fact that the person who lived next door to me left her property and left it alone for about a year. She moved to Ridge, Ridgefield, Connecticut, and the bamboo went wild. And the bamboo on its own invaded the, the right of way because no one is taking care of the bamboo. And if you'd like to go by, it's at 36 Cross Hill Road, right off Topland in the Ridge um, Road area. And I really encourage you to take a look at this bamboo because it belongs in the jungle. And it is invading all of the neighboring properties. It hasn't come to me yet because I'm 50 feet above her. But it will. It goes underneath the asphalt. It is an underground root system that will obliterate everything. It can take down tall buildings. It can cover cars. Um, if you drive on any kind of parkway, in fact, on Ridge Road, right near the uh, Department of Public Works, if you look at the overhead lines, you'll see that they're all covered with invasive weeds. We don't just have a bamboo problem here. We have a Japanese knotwood problem. We have a tree of heaven problem. We have um, oh, that root that, that is prized for tea in Asian communities as a medicinal tea. I can't think of that. I always forget the name. But it's bitter something or other. Um, with huge elephant ear type leaves. That can cover a field in two weeks. Um, this past month, I spent $10,000. This is the second time I've done it with a private company that also obliterates poison ivy to get rid of bamboo and these other invasive things on two of my hills going down to my neighbors. And after I did it, I noticed that she had all of these weeds on the other side of a, of a fence that we have in common. I need help from the, the town of Greenberg in making it a law, but I am not alone here. Other people don't realize that they, it's like the, the invasion of the body snatchers. This is a very scary problem. And I think I made my point. I'm going to sit down now, but I hope that you'll take this very, very seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation, and it highlights the importance of this. So thank you. Anybody else? Sir, please state your name at the podium, first and last. Thank yes, you. Yes, the name is John Moore. Um, is that M O O? M O O R E. Okay. M O O R E. Okay. Uh, I'm also a recipient of a neighbor's uh, bamboo. Um, I would call it uh, willful neglect. Um, I've been putting up with it for about 12 years now. And I'm very much an advocate of, of this law. Um, there's, you know, for anybody who is not immediately affected by bamboo, there's something else that they should know. That bamboo is, is uh, mosquitoes are attracted to bamboo plants. And they have the ability to bore into the reeds and plant their eggs. 
and the, the bamboo reeds are impervious to insecticides. So if you happen to have a strand of bamboo in your neighborhood, it is affecting you. It's increasing your, your mosquitoes. Uh, and uh, I don't have to say anything more about that health issue. Uh, that, it, the, that topic is, is, a, uh, is included in the draft, and I think it's important that you all understand why it's in that draft, because this is truly a health issue. And I just thought I would share that also. Yeah, and I'd just like to mention that um, you've been uh, writing to me for probably seven or eight, maybe 10 years uh, on this, and um, you were like constantly writing, every, you know, at least once a year or whatever. So I apologize that it took uh, such a long time uh, to take the issue seriously. As you know, you mentioned before, this is an issue that a lot of people just are not aware of. So when you say, oh, we're doing something about bamboo, you know, regulations, it, you know, if you, if you haven't seen it or you're not paying attention, it, a lot of people just are ignoring, you will ignore the issue. But, you know, since, you know, you brought it up and since other people have highlighted it, I think this is really an important um, proposed legislation, but I wanted to just acknowledge your your efforts and uh, and apologize that it took so long uh, for the legislation to be drafted. And it's not because of you, because you definitely were very very persistent. So thank you. Could I just make a point of clarification on this law, the way it's currently drafted? Um, right now, there's just some language that says bamboo property owner in a few parts. This is just a grammatical correction that um, I suggest to Aaron and the CAC. Instead of saying the bamboo property owner, I think we'll, we'll change that to the owner of the property from which the bamboo originated, okay. just to clarify that it's the first property that had bamboo so that if it spreads to another property, that person won't be in violation of this law. Just a slight grammatical uh, change. That's fine. There was a, a zoning case where bamboo was, they got a variance and bamboo was allowed instead of evergreens. I, I'm assuming that this will apply to that particular property as well, correct? Yes, based yes. on the definitions, yes. All right. Sir, I see your hand up. Would you like to speak? Yes, please. Okay, please state your name first and last at the podium. Thank you. Sure, my name is Naveen Rajdev. I'll give you the spelling. Naveen, R-A-J-D-E-V. So hi, um, we have- You live in which section? Um, Greenberg, what do you call it? Like ABC Streets. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, sorry, four years here. <laughs> when, we <bought> the, <laughs> when we bought the property, it had bamboo on it. Uh, I never faced what the bamboo was or uh, heard about it. But yes, pretty soon, I agree with that lady's comment. Very invasive. Uh, and we, you know, push the line back. Um, but how do we know whether it belongs to our property or like, I mean, it's on my property and my neighbor's property. Some of it we have cut, moved it back, but you know, it's still there. Now I, I'm kind of living with it because it provides me some privacy, you know, in that sense. But we keep every year just pushing the line back up. I mean, of course there are mosquitoes and dead birds and whatnot. But when you, when I read the, the, the statements in the, of the law or whatever, the proposal, I, I mean, even if I put the sheathing or I just cut it out, you know, it's not going to go away in one year, you know, because the roots are so deep, they will keep popping up here and there. How do we, uh, like, you know, we know that it is, it is my responsibility or my neighbor's responsibility because, because it is on the border of my, you know, my, with two of my neighbors. What street are you on? What street are you on? Moreland. Moreland, Moreland. Moreland Glendale. I'm wondering if that's the one that got the barriers. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll look, in, we'll we'll look, look into it, but it, sure. it, it started somewhere, right? Yes, yes, we, we don't, so, yeah. So, right. Well, okay. the, the purpose of this law is to, and I guess we have an arborist, they can go out and take a look, um, to determine who who was the origin? That's why we suggested the change in the language. It's who, where did the bamboo originate? 
because it shouldn't be the burden on the neighboring property. Right? Yeah. That's why this legislation um, yeah. is desperately needed. Because it is invasive. I mean, this, this, is, oh, yeah. this is this is a terrible situation, and it's almost it, it's almost impossible to get rid of if it really takes over, without tremendous expense, right? And even that, you're not sure. And so, you can't do that. You can't. You can't. You can't call out. You can't. I, you can't call out. Right? It's on the record. You got to be at the microphone to speak. Right? right? So, um, but the. Uh, you know, our staff can go and take a look and see sure. what they can determine one system passes. Yeah. But that is an interesting situation. Yeah. So right. if they moved in and the bamboo was already there and their neighbors moved in after the bamboo was there, then how do you determine whose responsibility it is? My guess is it's whichever one is the greater density is the one that it started. But we'll leave that to the arborists. Thank you so much. And Thank should you. that be specified in the, should we have like a clause in the legislation, you know, how uh, if there's a dispute out over which property it is? Um, I, the only way we could give a penalty for a violation of this law is if we can show that that's where the bamboo originated right. from. So I, I don't think it necessarily has to be included right. in there. We would, um, someone be able to fight the violation um, if they could try to show that it didn't originate from them. I, I also want to point out that there is a good faith efforts clause as well. So whereas you will have 30 days to remove the bamboo, there are a few instances where the building inspector can give you additional time if you're showing good faith efforts to having it removed. As you said, it may take longer than 30 days. Um, but of course, that would be a discussion with the property owner and the building inspector and the building inspector's determination. Right. Do, does Aaron know how, uh, I know in Long Island, you mentioned that you know this is um, prevalent as a law. Do you know if there's other communities in Westchester County uh, that have bamboo legislation? Offhand, I do not. Uh, we did focus on Long Island, but I can report back to the town board on that if there are others within Westchester. Um, I just we looked at, ban at bamboo on the island because they've been dealing with it for a lengthy period of time. We've even communicated with some of uh, those communities on enforcement and their efforts to eliminate and or remove or eradicate certain areas that include the bamboo or have bamboo growing, and they've been somewhat successful. So the hope is that we can be as well. Just to um, add onto the response to the question from one of the folks in the audience. We will be looking at each individual, you know, case that is brought to the town staff's attention on a case by case basis. And some of them are clear cut because there's a f wooden fence and there's just a few shoots on one side and the other it's just all bamboo. So those are easy, but there may be right. some, some issues. Right, and and the law really um, is is specific to who's responsible within a given situation if it spreads, but there are people who have bamboo right. that you know, no one is going to know about, but it, 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 it's incumbent upon those of us who have bamboo growing to eradicate as soon as possible. It shouldn't have the law try to dictate uh, or, or they, they shouldn't be brought to the building inspector's attention. Um, they can just do that on their own. I am concerned, though, that there's, before the zoning board, there is a decision that says that bamboo is an evergreen. And I, if we have to, I'd like to include in the law that that's not correct. We will have a second fi uh, five-minute period if the hearing will close tonight. Yeah, you'll get another round. Can I say something else? You, you, you will, well, I don't know. Is there anybody else who wants to speak? No, we don't have any further requests. Okay. Speak. So the second round. Okay. Do you have any others? No. Nope. You. Okay. <laughs> I want to do this in the proper form because I see that Councilman Sheehan is very upset that I interjected and I don't want to offend. The I don't think he is so upset. I think he was just trying to make it clear what I, the. I just yes. like rules. I know. <laughs> okay, I want to share something with you. The way to get rid of bamboo, and I'm an expert on this now, and I had the pleasure of, of uh, meeting uh, Commissioner Schmidt on the phone, who was very helpful. He had me meet with Sven Herger, who is the consultant 
of uninvasive uh, products to, um, to the town and who used to work with the Greenberg Thanks. Center. And I also met with Kathy Ludden, who is the naturalist. You know all these people. So I know how to get rid of bamboo. And I also know that you must make it part of the, the ruling that each homeowner that has bamboo must take responsibility for it, even if it got there by accident. I didn't put the bamboo on my land when I bought it. Um, I don't think that my neighbor sent it to me as a gift. And while some people think it's very lucky, I think that if you have bamboo on your property, you're very unlucky. Um, you can get rid of it with painstaking methods. It has to be cut down with a scythe or with weed whackers down to the ground. And then whatever little stumps, you can't get rid of the roots. They are like wood. It, it becomes hard and woody and very, very tall. You have to inject the roots with herbicide. It doesn't have to be Roundup. And when you do it in that way, you are not affecting the environment. A lot of people are very concerned about having Roundup or any kind of glyphosate in, in the environment. It does not affect the environment when you localize it that way. There is no other way to get rid of it once you have it. So a homeowner who sees those little sprouts coming up must get it quick before it multiplies. I'm quite serious. Because if not, you have a really big expensive pro uh, uh, problem. So that part of this law should be an education process to the people in each community. And I know that all of Westchester is concerned about this right now. Cornell is very involved with it with their extension programs and many, many others. Um, I don't know what each community is doing, but I know that it is not just Greenberg. And I know it's not just Westchester. It's all over the United States. So if you have a law and you don't have the education process to um, tell people how to deal with it, you're going to have a real problem. So you almost have to go hand in hand. And people have to understand they will be fined. It is their responsibility. Just like in New York State, you have to take care of your own water, but this is usually overlooked. You have to put in dry wells if you have too much water. Otherwise, you're inundating your neighbors. People don't do that. We let it slide. But as communities, we have to take that responsibility. So I would just like to uh, hope that we can do that as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, -O -O you know, we, when you were talking about education, we have an internship program, uh, Judith and I uh, have been sponsoring it, and we have, I think, 42 uh, summer interns, and maybe we could uh, assign the interns to uh, help develop an education campaign uh, for uh, for this because this is an issue that a lot of people are really not aware of and um, you know having students involved highlighting it I think would be uh, you know a good use of, uh, of you know of their time so I think I'm real I, I really appreciate that suggestion so I'll, I'll bring that up that's an excellent idea Elaine may I get your contact information before you leave this, this evening I'd love to have you come and speak to the intern yeah you, you were very uh, you really made a, uh, you really uh, brought it to light. You know, you, you, your presentation was one of the best uh, presentations in terms of public hearings because this is such a complicated issue for the average person and you, you made it understandable and easy, you know, easy for people to recognize, you know, the impor importance of, of this legislation. So I, I think this is really great and we will work on the education effort. We could also have Cornell Cooperative Extension. Maybe we should, uh, Judith, maybe we could get them to uh, show up with the, um, with, the, with the student interns to explain the whole issues and, and spend. I would help you on this. If you, if you need my help, I'd be happy to um, volunteer time. To this is great. Thank you. Thank you. OK. There are no no, the young lady wants to speak. Oh, okay. And please come forward and state your name first and last for the uh, sonographer. Corso Thank you. Corso Tisha Ulanik. T-I-C-I-A-U-L-A-N-I-K. Uh, 
A-N-E-C-K. I just wanted to end with a quick story that some uh, a woman me. from uh, Japan told me that uh, when there is an earthquake, they send the children into the bamboo forest because it doesn't separate. Oh, wow. Wow. This wow. is what we're dealing with. Yeah. So, so if you cut rid of it, good for you. <laughs> but I don't see how. Well, well, thank you. That's interesting. That's the bamboo. I, I pulled up the property, uh, 35 Cross Hill Road with the bamboo. It's, it's overwhelming. Great. So thanks. So I'd like to move that we close the hearing and leave the record open for seven days. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would we be voting on this at the next meeting? Yes. July 12th. Yes, yes. I am. So we'll be voting on this July 12th.